Welcome to my channel, where there are interesting and equally sensational stories. Listen to today's story not D-Day exactly. I found out my wife is having an emotional affair. Help? I recently wrote a post on r slash divorce about how my, my new dog had serendipitously given me some information about my wife's emotional affair. I had been suspecting that something was up for a while and when she retconned, gaslighted, and suddenly threw me to the side, I felt something. Amongst the sea of confusion, pain, sadness, and doubt were suspicion. To make a long story short, she retconned our history and claimed that she never actually loved me. There were a lot of traumatic and effed up things she said, and that was one of the more tame things, but it hurt the most. I'm not the type to snoop. In my opinion, unless you're going scorched earth, it's just not a good way of getting information, especially if reconciliation is your goal. I don't like to admit it. It has always been my goal to reconcile with my wayward spouse to give her space and respect her privacy. But today, I broke that. I saw a message from a number I did not recognize and its preview was too hard to ignore. Now, for the story, we recently got a puppy. We, as in my immediate family, my wife and I moved in with my parents as she suggested we could live there and save money for us. It was a good idea and very forward thinking on her part. I really didn't want to move, but I did because she was my teammate, and it felt like I could overcome it with her by my side. Our family dog passed away shortly after the wayward spouse and I moved in. Fast forward to now, and we have finally got a puppy. No clue where wayward spouse is as she is mostly ignoring me. The puppy is honestly really annoying, and her teething makes her so chewy. Yesterday, I hit the gym late. I had recently seen my therapist and a lawyer for a consultation that day, and it had me feeling anxious and depressed. When I returned in the late afternoon, I came home to see my wife's Apple Watch on the kitchen counter charging. My first thought was that she must be here. Holy F, but alas, she is not. So where did it come from? My grandmother came out with the dog in tow and explained that the dog ran into my open bedroom and saw the watch. She carried it back to the living room where she chewed on it till my grandmother found her. The gummy sports strap on and Apple watch does look pretty sweet if her teething. She took the watch and charged it thinking it was my mother's. They have the same color and model watch. When I got home, the watch was alive. I was surprised that this thing has been missing for months, and I didn't find it till she left me and I moved rooms. I threw it in a corner of the room on a pile of wayward spouse's mail and clothes. The dumb pup came in and grabbed it as it was so easy to reach. As I walked back to my bedroom, the notifications came in. The first text I saw was from a number I didn't recognize. It said, stockpiling for UBB. Between my wife going no contact after suggesting that she wanted to work on a marriage, my suspicions, and what this message said, it was very hard not to look, so I broke. I opened it up and started reading. Messages and conversations were happening in real time. This wasn't her affair partner, but they talked about me. I saw her talk about me in ways that killed me. Her newfound online friends only have her side and they all think I'm a controlling loser. The worst part is I suggested and recommended she hang with some new folks in this video game because I didn't want her to feel trapped with me. She's not super social, so I always try to get her to foster friendships. When she talks about me to these people, she refers to me as her ex. This entire time, I've been silently standing for my marriage, always referring to her as my wife. I was gutted. So much for a serious attempt at working on our marriage, after basically finding out that my wife sees me as her ex and not her reconciliation partner, I tried to sleep, but I couldn't. Waves of anxiety and pain washed over me in a long, successive crashes. I started to cry, and that's when the late night texts from him came in. F it, I thought, how much worse can it get? So I read them. And it showed a guy who obviously had feelings for her, delegating care and calling her pet names like Baby, BB, or Babe. I've seen them talk late into the night. She's been overprotective of her phone lately, and her bedroom has been dead so this made sense. I had a feeling. I have no clue if things have gotten physical with them, but at this point, it doesn't matter. 
So much of what I thought I knew lost. So much time wasted six plus years, ups, downs, and as much love as I could muster, and nothing to show for it. Those who are currently in it, how did you deal on the first day? After a month of being too stupid to see the light, I feel like I have jumped back to square one, day one. What was your first few days like? Did you confront or did you wait? Our first bit of advice comes from fragrant spray. Back up the phone and gather your evidence. Get a lawyer, an STD test, and separate finances. Find a new place to live. You don't have to tell her any of this until you're ready to file. You now know that any attempt to fix things is just BS to string you along. This time apart is so she can try out someone else. She does not respect you. Don't be her backup plan. DOP responds I'm saving texts right now. Don't really want to confront her because I want to see how much she and her dumb fair partner will reveal. She mentioned to one of her friends that I brought up the watch, and he called it suspect, but she seems to think I can't see her messages. She screenshots my texts and sent them to this friend. I'm totally snooping, so I guess I can't be too mad. She left me at my lowest. Our power dynamic shifted after she graduated. I supported her for five plus years through nursing school and life in general. I paid all the bills, paid for her clothes, food, etc. After the pandemic hit, I went back to school at her request, offering that she would gladly switch places with me because it's only right. Well, here I am a little over a month after our first wedding anniversary on the precipice of divorcing, living in my parents' office with no job and no classes. She left me the second week of school, and I dropped them before the bad grades could affect me. Nothing to show for all the time. Blood, sweat, money, and tears. All I can really do right now besides what you have suggested is wait for school to start and try to take care of myself. Been looking for a job, but I'm surprisingly having a difficult time. Today has been a tough one. Our next response comes from Reasonable Produce 24. You are young and have a world of opportunities ahead of you. It hurts like hell, but be grateful you're discovering her true character now, not with three kids and mortgage and ten years of debt. The chances of you recovering a meaningful relationship from the spite and disrespect you have personally endured and read is very low. This person is not your friend, much less your wife. Just start the divorce proceedings. And if she comes crying back to you, then show her what you have and have her explain that. Otherwise, just move on. A life well lived is the best revenge. One more thought from the fixer, 123,456. She is actively cheating, emotional, at a minimum on you already. Unless you are in a jurisdiction where adultery matters in a divorce, then additional proof is of no use. Also, you don't have a marriage anyway. If you continue with your current course of action, you will destroy yourself mentally. It's time to see a lawyer and implement the 180. It's not going to be easy, but it must be done for your own sake. Sending strength. On to the next story. Could use some feedback on this one? This is long, but I've been struggling on and off for a month. Anyone who can offer some feedback, my heart goes to you. My wife and I are effectively high school sweethearts from different schools together since 16, together 20 years, married for 12, one daughter, trying for number two. Like a lot of infidelity stories, we were not at our highest emotional peak when it happened. We spent much of 2021 trying for child number two. The pressures and disappointments of it not happening were hard on both of us. Knowing how especially hard it had been on her, I constantly tried to be the it's okay. Next month, we'll just try try again. Person with a brave optimistic face, which was apparently interpreted as I didn't care. Sex became so regimented around our ovulation schedule. It sucked a lot of fun out of it. She wanted more spice and felt like her needs weren't getting met in that way. But on the flip side, I historically had a lot of brick walls and no's around creativity. So I too felt like my own needs were underserved. There were some communication roadblocks around all of it. There was also the all too typical challenges of being new parents with limited childcare outside of when we're both at work. Not a lot of us time. Which leads to a rut feeling and the feeling of just being a job parent. 
I should note that one thing that makes all of this so much harder is that I'm not the jealous or possessive type, and I mean, at all, in 20 years, I felt like trust and faithfulness was a pillar of our relationship. I was also well aware of feeling like we were in a pressured rut, and I was proactively taking big steps to fix that. I was taking steps as major completely changing my role at work, so my hours meant I would be home almost nightly. I had to work evenings about three times a week, which was getting hard on all of after relying on family for most of three years. I was seeking a local sitter to make sure we could start having a regular date night going forward. And I had some spice-up ideas and gifts lined up for that holiday in February. I know there are ups and downs in long-term relationships and that the situation we were in was challenging, but always worth working through. During the fall, she befriended a new male co-worker. Like I said, I'm not knee-jerk jealous, and thought nothing of it. A lot of early communication was around sharing he and his wife's own fertility issues with child number two. As time passed, it seemed like he was mentioned more and more in work stories, even though they definitely don't work directly with one another. But again, not the jealous type. A few months ago, we had another crushing month of not getting pregnant. She was particularly emotional this time around and texted me from work saying she had a coworker, made it sound like a girlfriend, asking to take her out for a drink in response to her hard day and asking would I be fine if she did that while I had our daughter? Of course. Go have fun. Get your mind off things. Chat with a friend. Hell, I've been trying to convince you to do things like this every once in a while for a long time, but you constantly cite mom guilt. Please go. I'm an extremely hands-on dad with caretaking. The kiddo and I have the house held down. Turns out, the friend was said co-worker. Now I can't stress this enough. In 20 years, I don't think I've ever had anything that qualifies as a huge, jealous reaction before. She claimed it was platonic, but I was pissed. In retrospect, her failure to mention who the coworker was felt like an intentional omission. She and I rarely had child coverage to have a date night, but in this case, I was used as a childcare to go out for drinks, one on one, with another guy. And in response to her extremely emotional state, I explained that this was a big emotional boundary issue in my eyes. For contrast, I explained that if I had a married female coworker who was feeling emotionally fragile, I would never take her out for drinks one on one without knowing her husband personally or more importantly, knowing it was something he was aware of and comfortable with. She made me sound like I was crazy for thinking it was anything more than just drinks with a friend. But it just didn't pass the straight base test for me, but I quickly gathered myself, talked more rationally about how I felt and she he acknowledges he wasn't thinking about it from my point of view, and we moved on. Fast forward two months at 6 a.m. and her daughter is always up early. We often alternate getting up there so the other can get a little bit more sleep. I take her downstairs, and we use my wife's work iPad to run the PBS Kids app. I'm not a snoop, but as I go to get it set up, I'm taken aback by the iPad home screen being littered with notifications and private chat messages with this employee. Talking about coming over to our house at 7 p.m., the previous night, how they had a fun, uncomplicated arrangement. They'll have to be put on hold in a few weeks. The week my schedule is changing for the reasons I said before and so forth. I was in a total state of shock. When I confronted her, she got a look of dread and shame. In the little time we had to converse, quietly, as to not alert our daughter, I found out that he had been lying to his own family about going to work for his second job. Coming over once a week on nights, I worked late for the last five weeks straight, with the intention to go two more rounds until, of course, my schedule wasn't as convenient for their arrangement. She tried to plead that she never meant to hurt me or our relation and she was 100% committed to us. I have never been more frazzled and feeling like I was spiraling in my life. I sent a lot of angry texts, as you can imagine, my coworkers knew I wasn't okay. I played it off like I got bad news on the family health front and had to leave. There was no way I could focus. I drove home and tried to convince myself things weren't as bad as it seemed. I want to reread the messages to see if I reacted too strongly. And wouldn't you know the two had a new chat going? It was clear that he was aware I found out, 
but the conversation didn't seem to. Oh, no. In fact, it was a bizarre combination of chatty Kathy friendly talk about what they made for food the night before and her inviting him down to her room at lunch to go through her phone, listing her lock screen password, and read her private messages, the angry texts. I don't know about any of you, but if you cheated, crap at the fan and the wound was extremely fresh. Your claim is that you're committed to the relationship. There's something about immediately going to the prayer partner and saying, hey, come have lunch with me and go through my phone. Doesn't sit right on the where's your loyalty front. All the hallmarks of emotional and physical betrayal were there, of course, but there were so many reasons that this was extra bad circumstantially in my view. It was done while we were trying to get pregnant with child number two after bonding with this person over stories about fertility struggles. I mean, that alone is messed up. There's nothing she cited about where her head was at at the time. They couldn't also be said about me, but I was working on solutions and an extramarital affair isn't even on the radar. While we struggled to get us time with a toddler at home, I was effectively used as childcare she could have that sort of time out with someone else which was also the night that talk of each of them, wanting more in the bedroom heated up. As far as wanting more goes, I already mentioned my plans for helping break out of the rut, but she had put up so many brick walls with me it was hard to even know what direction to go and forget crazy ideas to spice things up. We're talking things most couples would consider pretty basic. She would say oral sex was a no-go because it gave her lockjaw that she could never do doggy style because it hurt and that her OBGYN had acknowledged it had something to do with her pelvis that she was long past wearing anything that wasn't comfortable underneath that she's been extremely self-conscious about her breasts since nursing and always wanted to keep them covered since. And you know what? Even if there were things I wanted, I would never push her in any way she wasn't comfortable. But come to find out everything she ever took off the table for me was apparently on the table for him during the affair. Even busted out lingerie she wore on our wedding night that she'd never wore it for me again in 12 years. We've been together since we were 16 freaking years old. She's the only person I've ever been with. While it's natural for anyone to have passing curiosities in a lifetime, it creates this imbalance when one person acts on them and only one is left faithful for basically life. Whether was stopping the affair to begin with or taking extremely active steps to improve communication and things with us, none of these were conclusions that happened on their own. This wasn't a what have I done. This was a mistake, and I need to come clean moment. This was over time, methodical, and had planned for more. But I got caught attempts at improving anything with us in ways she never did before all just feels like concessions now. The fallout. Is a long separate story in itself. I spent two weeks sleeping on separate floors. Most nights, we had big emotional powwows. Sometimes in ways that could have been considered productive, but have a hard time letting the most hurtful thing someone has done to me be viewed as any sort of positive turning point. I've been trying to give reconciliation a shot, but my feelings about it and what it means for our relationship are all over the map. Before I say too much about it, I could just really use some feedback. To anyone who has gone through all of that, thanks for listening. Ask for feedback and boy, you'll get it. T. Smith 2020 starts us off. The person you loved cared about and trusted is now dead to you. Your relationship as you knew it is also dead to you. Everything you loved and cared about has changed and not for the better. She willingly broke your family. She willingly broke your heart. She willingly broke your trust. She willingly broke you. If you still want her around, she's got a lot of work to do to fix everything. She willingly broke, including you. Someone who inflict pain from infidelity will never understand the pain. When I learned of my significant other's infidelity, the pain was crushing. I have never felt such severe pain. She was like, get over it already. One week after I found them together, she continued to trickle truth me, lie, and never really admitted the truth. It seemed like every week I learned more and the pain level ramped back up to unbearable. Finally, I got really angry. I hired a polygrapher to test her, and I was shocked at her truth. We only held hands and talks sometimes kissed, but no sex. Polygraph truth. Five plus guys, intercourse, oral, 
and anal with all numerous times with each repair partner in the park, in hotels, in my car, even in my house, in my bed. When confronted with the test results, she didn't deny anything. She went to a lot of trouble to have her affair. Just for a little insight into what she probably did for her affair. She did so much for the relationship without thinking about you, your family, or the pains she would inflict when caught. She did all of this with extreme forethought and planning. She groomed to her fair partner. She set up a time and a date to meet. She acquired the place for her and her affair partner to meet and screwed behind your back. She planned what to say to you if you asked about her day. She planned what lies she was going to tell you if you became suspicious. She planned what lies to say to you in order to trickle truth you to limit collateral damage to herself and her fair partner. When finally confronted with irrefutable evidence, she probably gave you limited information about her fare forcing you to relive the pain of D-Day over and over again with each new D-Day. She did this each and every time she wanted to see and screw her fair partner. Can you imagine what your relationship would be like if she put in that much time planning dedication to you and your relationship? And she did too willingly destroy your relationship willingly to betray you, willingly to lie you. Willingly destroy your trust in her and every other woman you might ever encounter. I'll just leave you with this. She placed you in this extremely uncomfortable and dangerous STD situation. She willingly broke your trust. She willingly broke your family. She willingly broke you without even a second thought. You need to take care of you physically, financially, and legally. You used to be able to depend on her, but no more. Speak to an attorney pronto. You wouldn't want to suffer because you did something you didn't know you couldn't do. Get STD tests. Stay tough and keep your guard up. Don't let her convince you to do something anything until you're 100% sure that it's what you want to do. You have a long road to travel, but don't make any big changes now because you don't know what road you are going. You have a long road to travel, but don't make any big changes now because you don't know what road you are going to take. Divorce separation, or reconciliation. In your situation, with how she cut you out of her life, cut you off sexually and enthusiastically gave them to another guy, even making you watch the kids while she was screwing them, that type of betrayal says a lot. Did she screw him in your bed? The one that two of you slept in? If she did, that's the worst foo in disrespecting you. People are here on Reddit to ask for help or questions. Sorry you've been forced into our group. We care, and we are here for you to help you move forward. Next bit of advice from the fixer, 123,456. So she is completely remorseless and still stuck in the fog with this guy, and you are already trying reconciliation. What is the basis for this reconciliation? Remorse? Nope. Honesty? Nope. Doing the work to regain your trust? Nope. Coming out of the fog? Nope. Commitment to your marriage? Nope. She has shown zero remorse and is continuing contact with him. She knows that you will not leave and therefore has no reason to stop her actions by staying in contact with him and having those types of conversations. She will cheat again and they will just hide it better. You have to serve her papers, implement the 180, get tested for SEDS, do the paternity test and tell the repair partner's wife or girlfriend. You can always pull the papers back if you decide to reconcile. If you continue with your current course of action, you will get nothing but more heartbreak. You deserve better, sending strength, and time to wrap things up from Zukabuga. I'm sorry you were here too. I married my high school sweetheart too. She cheated after 26 years. I posted my story recently. Wanted to reconcile, but in the end, she cheated again. One thing I noticed in your story that my wife did too was went to a fair partner to yes, multiple affairs. Her advice, comfort when I was mad and sending angry texts. No surprise she cheated with that guy after eight months of reconciliation attempt. So I think it will be hard to get all that stuff out of your head. Ultimately, I couldn't end divorce her.